Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, my name is Tori and today I have a very large, or at least large for me, stack of books to share with you guys. These are books that I have purchased maybe within the last couple of months. I think the earliest one was maybe from like end of June, early July, and then the most recent couple of books that I purchased was like maybe a couple days ago. I have a pretty wide range of books here. I have post-apocalyptic, science fiction, and high fantasy, and I'm really just intrigued by all of them. They all sound really great, and I've been looking forward to actually reading a few of them for a long time now. And some just recently caught my attention, so that's exciting too. But yeah, let's just jump right into it. This is a pretty good mix here, and I hope you enjoy. The first novel that I have here is Swan Song and this is by Robert McCammon. This is a mass market paperback and it is, this is massive. I actually own this book on Audible. It was a, I had a free credit but I did not make it very far in before. I just started feeling so lost by how large scale and just how epic this sounded. So I think I only made it to like chapter three before I was like I have no earthly clue what is happening right now. So I just ended up purchasing this. I'm actually not very good at listening to audiobooks. Every now and then I will listen to one. I'm actually better at listening to audiobooks of books that I have already physically read because I feel like I can just keep up with the story more. But that's just me. But anyways, um, so this is a post-apocalyptic novel. The U.S. has been devastated by nuclear war and we're really just following, it sounds like, a group of characters trying to survive in the aftermath of that. And really no one has been left untouched by this disaster. So it does sound like already that we're following a pretty substantial cast of characters in the apocalypse. So I'm really looking forward to this. I love post-apocalyptic. It's one of my favorite uh, sci-fi subgenres, so I cannot wait to read this. The next book I have here is Blood Music and this is the SF Masterworks edition and this is by Greg Bear. And in this we're following a scientist who has been studying biochips and he's basically found a way to produce matter that can outperform lab rats. And you know the experiment just gets called off and so he ends up injecting himself with you know this experiment that he's basically created and from there it just sounds like all hell breaks loose and I'm just really intrigued to check this out. I don't know anything about this but the synopsis just really grabbed me right away. The next book is also one that I'm pretty intrigued by because okay Orbit is probably one of my favorite publishers. They've just been putting out some really quality books maybe in the last like year and a half not to say that the you know before that they've been putting out crap but just for some reason the last like year and a half almost two years from orbit have been really really great reads so the next book that i have here is ashes of the sun and this is by Django wexler and this is an epic fantasy novel i believe it's the first well actually aren't they all <laughs> I believe it's the first in a series and in this we are following a brother and sister who find themselves on opposite sides of a civil war. I love the premise of that already. I'm so excited. I love when siblings, I don't know what it is. I love when siblings, more so than like, you know, people who are in a relationship. I love when siblings or even like parents find themselves on different sides of a war. It's just, it always makes for really intense moments and just really, it makes for a great read. So I'm excited about this. And in this, actually the brother and sister who have been separated, they have not seen each other in about 12 years because the sister was, sold off to this really mysterious organization in the land and so the brother it sounds like he's just been doing whatever he can to track her down and find her but when that actually happens over a decade has passed and they of course are completely different people and the sister has just been trained to fight for this organization that she grew up in whereas the brother he has his own agenda and is just trying to fight for maybe it sounds like the land or the empire in general but whatever is going on I'm very intrigued by this and can't wait to finally sink into this. The next book that I have here is one that just in the back of my mind I've always been kind of curious to pick up. I'm not familiar with the movie at all but I know this is pretty popular and that is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and this is by Ken Kesey and this takes place in a mental hospital and it sounds like our main character he enters the hospital and just he is a little bit different from the rest of the patients and just really begins to shake things up and the structure of the hospital and the way things work and just starts to get some of the patients on his side. So that is seriously all I know about this book. Other than that, I just know that some people regard this as a classic. The movie is super popular, but never, you know, never knew really anything about this, but I'm really curious to finally pick this up. The next book that I have here is A Hero Born, and this is by Jin Yong, and this sounds so good. This takes place in a world where 
kung fu is considered to be magic and we have our main character who ends up being exiled from his um, home with the rest of his people and from there he is really trained in the art of kung fu and just building himself up and training so he can finally you know fight this enemy that has really wreaked havoc on his land. So ever since I finished the Poppy War, I've been like, I just need more Asian inspired fantasy. I have, um, what is it? I have The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu on my shelf, but I'm, that's a little ambitious. I'm not quite in the mood for that one yet, but I've just really been craving some more um, ancient Chinese history and some Chinese inspired fantasy. So I'm really, really excited to get to this eventually. The next book I have here, whoa. The next book I have here is Other Land, City of Golden Shadow, Volume 1, and this is by Tad Williams. This sounds so epic. This is a sci-fi novel, but it also, I think, blends some fantasy elements in there too. But this takes place in a world where Other Land, it sounds like it's this virtual, kind of virtual world and just shrouded in secrecy. And it really starts kind of getting the attention of other people when children from Earth end up kind of disappearing into Other Land. And that is... That's pretty much all I know about that. It says only a few have become aware of the danger. Fewer still are willing or able to take up the challenge of this perilous and seductive realm. But every age has its heroes and unusual times call for unusual champions. I don't know why I didn't realize this book is as big as it is. It's like, this is like over 700 pages. I don't know why in my mind I'm thinking this is like a 500 page book. Definitely not. The next book I have here is also an adult sci-fi novel and that is The Book of the New Sun, Volume 1, Shadow and Claw, and this is by Jean Wolfe and this is also in the SF Masterworks edition. And in this we are following this man who is a torturer's apprentice. That sounds wild already. <laughs> I don't think I've ever read a book from the perspective of a torturer's apprentice but okay. So we have a torturer's apprentice and he ends up following in love with one of the prisoners. And because of that, he is exiled. And so, you know, he's making his way across this ruined landscape of Earth. And he ends up coming across this really mysterious gem. And that is all I know about that. This sounds so amazing. This is volume one. I ended up buying this from the book depository. And so volume one and volume two are obviously sold separately. But this on its own is already a pretty sizable novel. It's like 600 pages. So it's pretty hefty, but it sounds incredible. So we'll see. The next book I have here is Parable of the Talents and this is the second book in the Earthsea duology by Octavia E. Butler and I read Parable of the Sower several months ago now and just absolutely loved it. It was so good. I just, Octavia Butler, she has not disappointed me yet so I'm hoping this second book is just as good if not even better if that's possible than the first one. So just the overarching story of Parable of the Sower we're following. It takes place in, a, in America that's just really been ruined by economic collapse and food has really become scarce and so people have started branching themselves off into these different communities. And so we are following our main character, Lauren. She lives in her own gated community with her family and she is the daughter of a pastor. But as the world just really starts to go to crap around the community, Lauren really starts questioning her religious beliefs and her place in the community. And so the story is told to us through Lauren's journal entries. And you can, you know, as the journal entries progress, Lauren begins to kind of create her own religion based on new beliefs and new ideas about the world around her and that belief is the foundation of Earthseed. So that was the first book. It was absolutely amazing. I highly highly recommend you go read that. If you haven't read anything by Octavia Butler maybe start with Kindred first but you can't go wrong with either one of them in my opinion. So yeah I'm really hoping Parable of the Talents is just as great. The next book I have here is one I'm really looking forward to. This was sent to me by my friend Meg from Rogers Reads. I will leave a link to her Instagram in the description box below and she was so kind enough to send me A Song of Wraiths and Ruin and this is by Roseanne A. Brown. So in this we um, are following two different characters and their different perspectives. In one we have this character named Malik who it sounds like his sister got kidnapped and in order to get her back he strikes a bargain to kill the crown princess and her name is Karina. And so Karina she is our other perspective and Karina she is trying to resurrect her mother with this ancient ritual but one of the main I guess ingredients that's so weird to say one of the main ingredients for the ritual is the heart of a prince and so in order to you know complete this ritual Karina sets it in her mind to marry a suitor and he's going to become the prince and then once they're married she's going to kill him. I'm guessing Malik is going to become that prince and she's going to have to kill him and he's trying to kill her. 
it sounds really good it sounds really intense I know everybody has been raving about this lately and just really loves it so we'll see where I fall but I'm really looking forward to this it sounds really great and then the next two books I have here I will talk about together because they are related first is the kingdom of copper and then the next is the empire of gold and this is books two and three in the David Bod trilogy I recently read the city of brass by this is by S.A. Chakra Bordy, by the way recently read the city of brass and I loved it it was so good it was just such an epic and fun and like I mentioned really rich world building kind of journey so I really enjoyed that book and I just really needed books two and three and yes it haunts my nightmares that they don't match the just the overarching plot of the story is we are following this character named Naughty who is a con artist and as the first book progresses she just begins to learn more about her her past and her backstory and in one of the rituals that she performs she accidentally ends up summoning a djinn named Dara and together the two of them end up traveling to the mythical city of brass and from there things just get really political really tense and it's such a cool and just really great read I really enjoyed it so I can't wait to get to books two and three <sighs> even if they don't look alike. And then finally, these last books that I have here. So just, I wanna preface this by saying, I am going through a really strange thriller phase right now. I don't know what is happening, but I recently just read Lock Every Door by Riley Sager and it was so wild. I binge read that and I really enjoyed those characters and just how dark it was. And I actually already have Riley Sager's other novel, which is Home Before Dark. So I can't wait to get to that. But because of that, I am just like in a full blown, thriller whodunit mystery crime sort of mood right now so that really seeped over into these next purchases so the first book i have here is long bright river and this is by liz moore i'm so happy that i finally have another liz moore novel a few years ago wow a few years ago a few years ago i read the unseen world by her and i love that it was so good one of the best books I read that year and I had no idea that she was even working on another book let alone had one out already so this was such a pleasant surprise to me when I saw it on the shelf at the store. So in this we are following two sisters and one is sadly on the streets suffering with addiction and then the other one is a police officer and they don't really talk they haven't really it sounds like they haven't really had any communication with each other but the police officer she is still you know low-key trying to keep tabs on her sister but things really take a turn when um, a string of murders begin happening in this town and the cop's sister ends up going missing and so the cop she takes it upon herself to really put everything aside and just dive straight into this case and do whatever it takes to find the person responsible and find out what happened to her sister and in the process of that it sounds like she's putting her job on the line her relationship with her son but she's gonna go to any cost to find out what happened to her sister so that sounds amazing the next book that I have here is The Outsider and this is by Stephen King and before anybody asks I have not watched the HBO show yet I do want to get through this first before I you know decide to dive into the show but in this a uh, young boy is found dead in a park and actually the little league coach and the history teacher at the local high school he has not history I think it's the English teacher at the local high school he is accused of this crime and you know there are witnesses it sounds like that you know are pointing to him saying yep it was him he did it and there's also fingerprint evidence as well but it turns out that this little league coach and teacher he actually has an alibi for that day so that is all I know about that and just from there it sounds like things just really take a really wild turn and probably only a way that Stephen King can deliver because his mind is just I can't keep up but <laughs> I've heard really great things about this so many people love the TV show even my co-worker is like has been like if you watch the TV show no I haven't <laughs> but I do plan to change that when I end up reading this book so we'll see how it goes but if you have read this let me know down in the comments and then lastly this is probably the strangest thing that I've purchased I was just browsing my local half price books and me being in the thriller mode that I am I was like oh my gosh that sounds really interesting and that book that I grabbed is Kill the Father and this was translated from Italian this is also a thriller but also has some elements of I guess a crime novel to it um in this I guess keeping in the theme of park murders <laughs> that sounds really bad but keeping in the theme with that this story begins when a mother is found dead in a park and also her son has gone missing and you know the fingers point immediately to the husband and the father and from there just things sound like they really take a turn and the cop who is in charge of this investigation he ends up 
you know, bringing in two other really renowned cops from different parts of Italy. It says this is an international bestseller, which is really cool. It was translated, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the author's name, Sandroni Desiri. I believe is how you pronounce it. And it was translated by Anthony Sugar. It sounds pretty intriguing. I'm not sure when I'll get to this, but it it sounds like a lot. <laughs> so that's it for me, you guys. Those are all the books that I've hauled in the last couple of months. And this will probably more than likely be my last haul for 2020. I don't foresee myself. I mean, I do buy books. I don't haul books too, but I just don't see myself sitting down doing another haul. But who knows what will happen, but just for now, probably not. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, take care.